morning, YouTube. Hello, boys and girls. Mr. Mufasa says hello. Okay. <clears throat> so we got a little vice clamp, or a drill press vice that we uh, got on top of the plate for the drill press and we're able to move that around and everything is level. So we're gonna go ahead and attempt. <clears throat> oh, that's the wrong drill bit, isn't it? Yeah, you see how small that one we just took out there was. You see how small this one is. So, get this out here. <clears throat> I can put the nook of my hand underneath that support that cantilever. We just want to make sure we're in the middle. About the right depth. see a mark there <clears throat> and I'm gonna go a little bit further in I may have to turn this yard arm around get that other end Same thing on this one. I'm going to go a little further in. And you can imagine. You tried to drill that by hand. Why it was so easy to break drill bits. Already got that one, I think. And the last one on this yard arm. And I can't afford to break this drill bit. It's the last one I got for these. Little pins. They are little. Yeah, compared to my finger.
Okay, this is a piece of uh, two millimeter by two millimeter square walnut. And we're gonna cut six pieces out of here. Very carefully. Cutting these with an exacto knife, some other means. It's much quicker and other than a little cleanup work. Get a nice black cut. First pin I put in, bent bent it a little bit. But that drill bit on the press is just the right diameter. to know I remember these the other day yeah point oh five Let me get that clear zero out I think I need to recalibrate. Hmm. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. I gotta recalibrate that. Batteries probably. Dirty rat. Let me get my other ones and see what it is. Oop. See, those holes are so small. We're going to do a little. Probably more than a little, wasn't it? Another reason you gotta have fingernails, you can't pick nothing up if you're Ain't got no fingernails. Can't open your candy package, tater chips. Fingernails like pliers, razor knife, tweezers, all different functions in one package.
even catch all. See how that fingernail caught that thing and tucked it up under here like a chicken with an egg? Sometimes it catches stuff you don't want up under there though. Dirt. You gotta clean them. Okay. Now we glue these babies on. Oop, we gotta drill a hole in them first. Hey, now we're doing some blocks. So I get that granny knot near the middle. Take one of our blocks and <clears throat> stab it on that pin so it's easy to handle. this in the vise that loop now I want that knot to pull tight opposite where the hole is at in the block you can see these blocks and get one here see the hole there but they've got a little groove cut in them <clears throat> sort of all the way around that one's not near as good as this one is it's got a little groove cut perpendicular to where the hole is all the way around. And that helps uh, give a place for this rope. To tie on to without slipping off of the block. So I'm just going to do two nice and snug granny knots and uh, <clears throat> put that on there. Those are like reverse tweezers that have spring-loaded, almost like um, hemostats. I'm wanting to fall the other way. I'm just doing that to sort of help hold that. little block in the right spot while I get this first knot because that thing will the block will try to roll around to the wrong side here and do all kind of funny stuff Now I'm getting the second grain knot loop, but before I pull that second grain knot loop tight, I want to pull the first one tight. It's sort of awkward, but it's what you got to do. I can take that pin out, 
park it back in its home. And before, you know, it could just cut this off and be done, but I want to make it look like there's some beef there holding that block on. So I'm going to go around both of these tails in opposite directions. So here again, you can use that hemostat type tweezers. They're a real, oops, got to glue that back on. Man, real hemostats have a gripping jaw with teeth and you got to really go for town to separate it. So what I'm trying to do, get two, two around in opposite directions. And then do some more. Granny knots. Then scoop them over. And um, this thread I'm using here did not come with a kit. This is like 70% uh, polyester, 30% cotton. So you can see it's um, nice and smooth like you put wax on it almost <clears throat> but it doesn't act near as good as the cotton as far as tying knots go because it's a little stiffer the only reason I like using it as opposed to the cotton you can see how fuzzy fuzzy the cotton is compared to so whenever you have something that's fuzzy, it'll pick up dust a lot easier and it doesn't look as clean. But in our case, some situations call for one or the other. So we're not exclusively eliminating one for the other. We're using both. Just depending on what we're what we're doing. Maybe I didn't have enough glue on that first one. I've been bumping it too, so that probably was it. Okay, now we got two more blocks to do inside, I think. Here and here. And then we got two to do out on the ends. And the ones on the ends will be different. Okay, boys and girls. Once again, we are plugging away today. We got these 
yard arms that are for the sail on the back of the ship. That one right there that's perpendicular. There'll be a yard arm on the top and one on the bottom that pivots on the rear mast. And then there's the pivot point. When we tie it on the mast, these beads will be like a bearing for that thing to rotate. So, I noticed that when I put this up here, it doesn't fit around the mast. So I think I'm going to have to take the Dremel and either open this up or cut away on the sides of that. I'd rather not cut away on the mast. I think I can open this up without affecting the holes. But that'll be something we got to do. So the last, I think, I got to look at the plans, but these two divots that go in the front here will stick out something like that, one on each side with a block on the end of it, a tackle. So, get over here to the plans. We got one pulley on the end and a double double there in the middle that's a different number than the end one and then one pulley at the butt two of them face up and one of them faces down and then we got this one here we have two when it's facing down and it's actually upside down it'll be like that I think on the ship and one there, one there, one there opposite of each other and a double block 309 a big one and then a single small one there 132 so that takes care of those two the divots that I missed earlier are right here just got to tie those on. And then we got the rear mezzanine mast mainsail done. You saw that the other day. And here's the new one we finished yesterday. And then the top one for the main mat or the mezzanine mast. So all three of those are ready to go on. We got the mass part done, we got the bow part done. I'm sure there's something I missed like that right there. I'm gonna have to look these over really good before I actually install them on the ship. That might be these here. But again, you can see there's so many items on one piece that it's easy to miss something but we'll check them over real good before we do the install according to I did did a show and tell a long time ago several videos ago of the steps of construction. Of course, we got all the mast done and the little crow's nest. And I think this is that thing that holds us the uh, flag in the back of the ship. And then it starts with the 
the yard arms. Step 153, 4, 5, and 6. And that's the stuff we've been working on, the yard arms. All the different yard arm pieces and I'm close to finishing up. So but probably the next step you can see after 162 is starting to sew up <clears throat> sew up the sails and get them ready. And then we start installing these things on the ship. So if we look back, let's just say 163, because that'll probably be after we verify we've got everything done. The plans send you this little book. And it's the only instructions, other than these photographs and the numbers that cross-reference to the numbers back here, what part it is, how big it is. Other than the photograph and the numbers and the cross-reference, this is the only explanation that the plan gives me for each one of those steps. So, for instance, step 163, which is probably what we're going to go to next. It's going to be right here. Cut and backstitch the sails following the pattern included in the kit. Sew and bolt rope. Sew the bolt rope on number 349. So that gives us a reference to a number or a size or whatever. Leaving at all the angles a butt hole, buttonhole for fixing later ropes or blocks. So for the sails and that photograph 163, that is all the info they give me for all those sails. And there's probably 20 of them, maybe more. So I got to figure all those sales out before I go on to 164, which is this step here. Fix and glue the bow spirit, tying it to the stem by means of a lashing line number 350. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of the, the shipbuilding. Uh, detail part of it, it isn't near as bad as trying to follow the instructions. You do have scale plans to go by and all these reference numbers to reference back to a part somewhere, a pre-made part or a part you make or a rope and the diameter of the rope or a block and tackle or the size of that. Other than that, you got to figure it out. Using this info and photograph and of course the plans give us a, a hand-drawn pictorial of the ship from the side view so we get a good idea of what does what where but it's not very precise you know once you get to a certain spot and you look at it real close well I can see three or four pulleys there, but what's behind it, you know? Um, gonna have fun. We're gonna have lots of fun. So we just take it one step at a time. Now there's a lot of breakdown once we get to this rigging part. And it's broken down into sections, so hopefully if we can find the right section at the step we're on and lash these ropes on one at a time, we can figure this out. But it's going to be a trick, I tell you what. So the mezzanine mast yard arms are done and ready to go on. Nut, 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 nut. 
the main mast, yard arms, the foremast, yard arms, and the bow spirit. I'm going to do these two little divots next. Just got to tie a little, little pulley on there. Look at all the scrap thread from all these ties. Just doing the different steps I've been doing on the ship. Tons of scrap. Now, one of the other YouTubers I watch is building this same model, the San Juan, and he had counted how many of these clove hitch knots that he had tied for the uh, rat line rope ladder. And I think it was something like 2,000 or whatever. I can't believe I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look at counting them. I don't know if I wanna do that. <laughs> can't imagine there's that many, but it could be, I don't know. So that's where I'm at, having fun, getting close to completion of a, a big uh, step in finishing all these yard arms and all the details on them. And uh, moving on to another task. Thanks for watching. Okay, I found the detail for that. It ties off the bow spirit. And we got her tied off and glued down in the hole. where we cut through there with a drill and lasso it around that keel. I got this glued up under here. I'm gonna wait till it dries and then cut this. And once the uh, spirit dries up in the hole, and it's glued on top of that post. I'll let that dry for several hours before I take this clamp off. But that's our bow spirit installed on the ship. was right after the last of the yard arms 350 references back to that big rope I probably used the bigger stuff than I was supposed to but next we'll put these these guys on and the photograph there does not tell you enough detail where that butts into I gotta figure out some way to get a better shot of where that butts into looks like it's just the base of that little square column with the dead eye on it but We'll look around and make sure we got it in the right place. Thanks for watching. Okay, there we go. The first of the rigging. The pulleys there to the pulleys out here through the eye loops. Pulley there. Pulley out here through the eye loops up to the 
point of the bow spirit. Then back down. So there is the first of the rigging. Of course, we got this all sealed in there good and the little divots on. That dried good overnight. So the next step, I think I need to install some eyelets somewhere over here. And we're tying off to some dead eyes that are up here. So we got to put two more dead eyes in the air off of these two dead eyes and then go up to the corner of the bow. And we got a few more left, so we're good to go. I'll work on that next. And we got the two dead eyes. Done in the front. Tied off to a little pin there. So, got a lot more ropes to go up here, but this detail is done. 